Hello students, myself uh, Prakash Karegaudar, on behalf of Dr. R.P. Patil, my SPO College, Hubli, uh, welcomes for foundation course. In today's session, we'll discuss the classification of animal kingdom. And you already know that. Biology is a branch of science which deals with the study of living organisms. A sum total of all the living organisms we call it as a biodiversity. Bio means living organism, diversity means varieties. A study of varieties of life forms on the earth's surface is called biodiversity. The living organisms are broadly classified into five kingdoms. Five kingdoms. Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Animalia. The five kingdoms of classification was proposed by Robert H. Whitker in the year 1969. According to Whitker, the organisms are uh, broadly classified. They are broadly classified into two groups, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The one contrasting difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, in case of prokaryotes, the membrane bound cell organelles are absent such as mitochondria, plastids, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, nucleus. Such organelles are absent in case of prokaryotes. Whereas eukaryotes, two cells where membrane or membrane bound organelles are present. Prokaryotes which includes only one kingdom that is kingdom monera you already know that okay bacteria which represents uh, kingdom monera one peculiar characteristic feature of uh, bacteria is they are prokaryotes first they are unicellular and prokaryotic cells prokaryotes again when you look at uh, eukaryotes Again, eukaryotes are again classified into two groups based on the number of cells. One unicellular, second one is multicellular. The unicellular eukaryotes which includes only one phylum that is one kingdom that is kingdom protista. Look at here, prokaryotes also unicellular, protistans also unicellular. What is the contrasting difference between monera and protista? Look at here. Monerans are okay. Monerans are unicellular prokaryotes, whereas uh, protistans are unicellular eukaryotes. Come back to the multicellular. Again, the multicellular organisms again they are broadly classified into two groups based on the presence or absence of uh, cell wall. Those living organisms, cells possesses cell wall are placed in one group without cell wall placed in other group. With the cell wall includes two kingdom that is kingdom plantae and the one is kingdom fungi. So one of the contrasting difference between kingdom plantae and kingdom fungi is the plantae are multicellular eukaryotic cells with the cell wall but they are phototropic or autotropic that means they have a capacity to synthesize own food material by the process called photosynthesis 
फिर एस फंगाई दे आर मल्टी सेलर यू कैरियोटिक सेल्स विद सेल वॉल बट दे आर हिटिरोट्रोपिक और वी कॉल्ड एज ए सैफ्रोफाइटिक दे आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन अदर लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म फॉर सर्वाइवल सो कम बैक टू द लास्ट किंगडम किंगडम एनिमेलिया दे आर यू कैरियोटिक मल्टी सेलर विदाउट सेल्स विदाउट सेल वॉल दोज आर प्लेस्ड इन अ ग्रुप कॉल्ड किंगडम एनिमेलिया the study of some total of all these living organisms all these living organisms okay, is called biodiversity biodiversity so biodiversity is a collection of varieties of all forms of life right from monera to kingdom animalia is called biodiversity again when you look at biodiversity is broadly classified into two types one is plant diversity and animal diversity varieties of plants we called as a okay plant diversity and the varieties of animals we called as a animal diversity come back to the kingdom animalia so kingdom animalia what are the characteristic features of a kingdom animal animalia the first they are most diverse group of organism they are multicellular eukaryotic okay and heterotrophs that means they are dependent on other living organisms they have the third characteristic feature they have well organized nucleus and membrane bound cell organelles membrane bound cell organelles so this is nucleus nuclear membrane okay and one characteristic feature you already know that cells are without rigid cell wall rigid cell wall and the last characteristic feature of uh, animals is they can move freely from one place to the other place in search of food mating partner and amenities for safety of life kingdom animalia is broadly classified into 11 phylums 11 phylums kingdom animalia is broadly classified into 11 phylums phylums the question arises on what basis they are classified so they are classified based on the levels of organization body symmetry nature of xylem or presence or absence of xylem fourth one presence or absence of notochord and fifth one is based on okay the germ layers so based on these characters based on these characters kingdom animalia is broadly classified into 11 phylums 11 phylums so let us start with the one by one the first characteristic feature levels of organization and you already know that animals are broadly classified into two groups based on the number of cells unicellular living organism and multicellular living organisms and unicellular living organisms are placed in a group called a protozoa whereas multicellular living organisms are placed in a group called metazoa the unicellular living organism they exhibit the, the first grade of organization that is protoplasmic grade of organization or we called as a unicellular grade of organization or a cellular grade of organization the name itself indicates okay that unicellular a single cell 
a single cell which perform all the life activities or single cell is involved in performing all physiological functions and that grade of organization we call it as a protoplasmic level of organization or unicellular grade of organization or a cellular grade of organization and it includes only one phylum that is phylum protozoa phylum protozoa look at here so animal kingdom is broadly classified into two groups okay. two groups the one is uh, okay unicellular or all unicellular living organisms are placed in protozoa and all multicellular living organisms are placed in metazoa and protozoans exhibit protoplasmic level of organization whereas metazoa they exhibit cellular tissue and organ level and organ system grade of organization let us move on to the, the next one the metazoans which exhibit cellular grade of organization tissue grade of organization organ level of organization and organ system level of organization the primitive multicellular living organism primitive multicellular living organisms exhibit cellular grade of organization so in case of cellular grade of organization a group of loosely arranged cells a group of loosely arranged cells which perform all the physiolog physiological functions of the body and look at you remember one thing these group of loosely arranged cells they do not aggregate to form tissues tissues are absent and such grade of organization we called as a okay we called as a cellular grade of organization that means in multicellular organisms or multicellular animals or primitive multicellular animals each and every cells perform specific physiological functions and that includes only one phylum that is phylum porifera phylum porifera or they are commonly called sponge more to the the next level that is tissue grade of organization or tissue level of organization you already know that in case of uh, in case of cellular a group of loosely arranged cell which perform all the life activities tissues are absent Whereas in case of tissue grade of organization, a group of similar cell, they aggregate to form tissues and these tissues perform specific functions or specific physiological functions of the body. So one contrasting difference between cellular and tissue, here tissues are absent or tissue system is absent in case of cellular level of organization, in tissue grade of organization, okay, cells aggregate to form tissues. Look at here, tissue grade, the multicellular animals, a group of cells perform specific functions, specific functions example it includes two phylums phylum porifera sorry phylum tinopora and phylum cylindrata the two groups of animals which exhibit exhibit a, a tissue grade of organization we'll move to the fourth one organ level grade of organization look at here organ level in tissue grade of organization, four fundamental tissues are formed. Epithelial tissue, one. Connective tissue, muscular tissue, nervous tissue. Nervous tissue. And these tissues aggregate to form organs. For example, when you consider okay, the elementary canal, okay, the stomach is a part of elementary canal and the stomach is made up of uh, okay, tissues, epithelial, connective and muscular tissue. That means tissues aggregate to form organs and these organs, okay, organs 
are concerned with the performing specific physiological functions of the body. Example is flat worms. Okay, in case of flat worms, okay, exhibit exhibit the organ level grade of organization. And we'll move to the last one: organ system grade of organization. Look at here. Cells aggregate to form tissue. Okay, cells aggregate to form tissues, and tissues aggregate to form organs, and organs aggregate to form organ system, and organ system aggregate to form organisms. Tissues aggregate to form organs, and organs aggregate to form organ system, and organ system aggregate to form organism. Organism, okay, and these organ organ system are involved in performing specific functions of the body. For example, digestive system mean for digestion, respiratory system mean for exchange of gases, circulation, transport of uh, biological material, excretory system, excretory system removal of metabolic waste. That means. The organ system perform specific functions of the body, or we call it as a division of labor. Labor, the division of labor is not present in case of cellular labor or okay unicellular level. Okay, division of labor is present in case of organ level and organ system. Okay, level of organization. So this is first character. Move to the second one. so based on the symmetry based on the symmetry again the animals again the animals are classified there are three types of symmetry bilateral symmetry radial symmetry and asymmetry we want the first one bilateral symmetry so animals having only one plane through which the body can be cut into two equal halves passing through median longitudinal axis or central axis so when you cut the animal through median longitudinal axis you find two equal halves are formed two equal halves are formed median longitudinal axis or central axis two equal halves are formed and the type of symmetry we called as a bilateral symmetry example from platyelminthes onwards platyelminthes onwards except echinodermata all exhibit a bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry okay the next one radial symmetry those animals are cylindrical in shape cylindrical in shape okay they exhibit radial symmetry they exhibit radial symmetry for example the best example is starfish when you cut the starfish any axis passing through center this axis okay two equal halves are formed this axis two equal halves this axis two equal halves okay that means animals having more than one plane through which body can cut into two equal halves passing through central axis passing through central axis example echinoderms one okay tinopos cylindrates are the examples for okay radial symmetry radial symmetry okay next one a symmetry those animals are irregular in shape for example amoeba amoeba is irregular when you cut the any amoeba any axis passing through center two equal images are not formed and the type of symmetry we called as a asymmetry a symmetry so for example okay 
amoeba is an example amoeba is an example so based on the body symmetry again animals are classified into three groups bilateral symmetrical animals radially symmetrical animals and asymmetrical animals more to the next characteristic feature okay. next characteristic feature so based on the germ layers based on the germ layers again animals are classified into different groups one is a bilateral another one is a, sorry one is a diploblastica another one is triploblastica so diploblastic animals are placed in one group and triploblastic animals are placed in one group how this classification is done okay we'll discuss in the next session okay thank you